Building muscle and strength around a busy schedule can be a daunting task. As things like work, school, family, and career demand more of our time, the number of days we can train can quickly go from four or five days per week down to one or two days per week. This time shortage can be short-term or long-term, but in most cases, we're not exactly sure how long we'll be tied up. Circumstances like this make it even more important to make all the gains we can with our available time. Unfortunately, many guys don't take this approach. Instead, many guys completely stop training when things get busier than usual. They'll say something like, if I can't train properly, why even bother? Or, I'll get back in the gym when my schedule goes back to normal. These mindsets will not only stop you from making progress when you can, but you'll lose a lot of your hard-earned gains faster than you'd like. The same way your body adapts to training, you must learn to adapt to your schedule and still find ways to progress. This video will go over a time-effective two-day weight training routine that can not only help you maintain, but will increase your gains if you train hard enough. We'll also discuss the two-day program details, including sets, repetitions, intensity, and the research behind this training style. But first, let's cover some of the biggest programming mistakes people make when training around a busy schedule. Number one, following a body part training split. One of the biggest mistakes lifters make when they can only train a couple of days per week is using a body part training split. This is where they only focus on one muscle group per session. Here's an example. Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday legs, Thursday shoulders, Friday arms. This form of training is prevalent in the weight training culture. A survey of 127 competitive bodybuilders found that 69% of respondents trained each muscle group once per week, while the remaining 31% trained twice weekly. Since the vast majority of competitive bodybuilders are following body part splits, there's a good chance many of you are as well. But here's the problem. To train every muscle group with a body part split, you need to train four to five days per week. Even a push-pull leg split requires three days of training, which you may not have when you're extremely busy. So if you have a busy schedule where you can only train twice per week, we're going to need a different approach. Number two, not training harder. The second mistake people make when they can't train often is not increasing their effort during the session when they can work out. When you're training fewer days per week, you have ample time to recover, which means you need to train harder. This 2020 meta-analysis reviewed the body of literature on overtraining. A total of 22 studies were selected for the review. This paper's main takeaway is that there's no marker other than sustained decrease in performance as a reliable indicator of overtraining and resistance exercise. Meaning you know you're overtraining when your progress in the gym starts to decline. This decline in performance occurs because your gains are masked by the level of fatigue you're accumulating. If you continue this trend by training too hard and recovering poorly, you'll eventually burn out. As you can imagine, if you trained extremely hard for five or six days per week with a ton of volume, performance would eventually take a hit. But when you're only training twice per week, that isn't the case. So really train hard with the two-day split we show you to make the most of the time you have to lift. Number three, doing too many accessory movements. The last mistake we'll cover is spending too much time on accessory exercises instead of compound lifts. Most muscle groups that you can target with accessory movements can be trained with compound movements as well. The difference is compound movements train other muscle groups as well, making them more time efficient. This is why the bulk of the lifts we do in this two-day routine will be compound exercises. Now let's get into the two-day split. The best way to train when you have two days per week is full body training. Now full body training doesn't mean you have to train every muscle in your body. Instead, it means you've trained muscles in both the upper and lower body in the same sessions. Another two-day split option is an upper-lower split. But here are several reasons why a full body routine is better. The first benefit of full body training is that you can split the training volume for a given muscle group into separate sessions. So if you need to perform 16 sets per week to build your chest, you can perform eight sets at each session. The quality of the sets will be better since you've had several days of recovery between each session. This contrasts with performing 16 sets in the same session, where the last eight will be done in a more fatigued state. And since we're insisting you train hard in these two sessions, the recovery time between these sets will come in handy. Another benefit of full body training is that there are more superset possibilities, since you can pair upper and lower body exercises. You'll see examples of this as we go through the two-day program, which we'll get into now. As you'll see, these are compound lifts with accessory movements done in supersets to get more volume done in less time. The main lifts will be done with straight sets, meaning you'll do a set followed by a two to three minute rest period. These exercises include the bench press, squat, deadlift, and overhead press. Here's the program. Day one, bench press, four sets of six to eight reps at one RIR. Squat, four sets of six to eight reps at two RIR. Weighted pull up, four sets of eight to 10 reps at zero RIR. Lateral raise superset with ab wheel, 
four sets of 10 to 12 reps at zero RIR. Barbell curl superset with dips, four sets of 10 to 12 reps at zero RIR. For those of you training at home, you can swap exercises as needed. You may have dumbbells for a chest press instead of a barbell press. If you don't have a squat rack, consider walking lunges or Bulgarian split squats with dumbbells. If you're not ready for weighted pull-ups, you can do the lat pullovers or assisted pull-ups. Remember, this is a guideline and can be adjusted to suit your preferences. Day two, overhead press. Four sets of six to eight reps at zero IRI. Deadlift, four sets of six to eight reps at two RIR. Incline press, superset with incline dumbbell rows. Four sets of eight to 10 reps at zero RIR. Hamstring curl superset with dumbbell reverse flies. Three sets of 10 to 12 reps at zero RIR. Calf raises superset with hanging leg raises. Three sets of 10 to 12 reps at zero RIR. Some alternate exercises include seated dumbbell shoulder press, Romanian deadlifts, single arm rows, machine reverse flies, and knee raises. Once again, feel free to adjust the program to make it yours. You may be wondering what the RIR at the end of each exercise is. RIR stands for repetitions in reserve, which refers to how many repetitions you have left before you hit complete failure. Another method of gauging how intense a set was is RPE, which stands for rating of perceived exertion. As discussed in this 2016 paper on RIR, these two systems can be considered an inverse of one another. As your RIR goes down, meaning you have fewer reps left to failure, your RPE goes up, meaning the set becomes increasingly challenging. On many of these exercises, the last RIR is zero. This means you need to push your final set to the point where you couldn't do another rep if you wanted to. This 2017 study looked at the perceived intensity and physiological response to the traditional, superset, and triset resistance training. Traditional sets were the standard straight sets. Supersets were two exercises done back to back, and tri-sets were three exercises done in a row. 14 male participants completed a familiarization session and three resistance training protocols. Traditional sets, supersets, and tri-sets in a randomized crossover design. They found that supersets and tri-sets can enhance training efficiency and reduce training time. However, athletes need additional recovery post-training to minimize fatigue effects. But since we're training only twice per week with this two-day split, we have plenty of time to recover. This means we can benefit from the extra volume done in a time-efficient manner without suffering from excess fatigue. Feel free to do these two workouts on any two days throughout the week. If you don't have too much time to train, there is still an opportunity to progress with the proper programming. If you follow this two-day split when things are hectic, you will certainly maintain your gains, but will more likely continue to progress. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up as it will truly help out the channel. Are you looking for a complete done for you training and nutrition guide guaranteed to add slabs of muscle to your frame in the next 90 days? Claim your free copy of our book, Bulk Up Fast. The book has already been paid for. All you have to do is cover the small shipping fee. Just click the link in the description, tell us where to ship it, and we'll send it to you anywhere in the world. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos. And don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.